let's pr practice combining some factoring methods. Let's say we had a term expressed by 3x squared minus 9x minus 54. So the flow chart in a previous video indicated that the GCF should be your first method. If you have a trinomial with a leading coefficient, that may be your common factor. So just check to verify that you can divide each term by that leading coefficient. And in this case, you can. 9 is divisible by 3, and negative 54 is also divisible by 3. So I'm going to factor that out as a GCF. And negative 54 divided by 3 is negative 18. So now, again, the flow chart on the last video indicated that when you're finished factoring with the GCF, you may be left with a trinomial or the difference of two squares. In this case, this is a factorable trinomial. So we're looking for factors of negative 18 that add to negative 3. Again, you can list every single factor of negative 18. Since it's negative, one has to be negative, one has to be positive. So you may not have to do this, but it doesn't hurt. It's negative 2, 9. 2, negative 9 negative 3 and 6, 3 and negative 6. So we're looking for the one that adds to negative 3 because that's the middle term. And that is right there, the last one. So our factors are x plus 3 and x minus 6. Don't forget to bring back down your GCF because when we multiply it back through without the GCF, it will not yield an equivalent expression. So if I were to fold these together and distribute to 3, I would end up with this polynomial in return. So this is factor completely. Today's lesson is not combining factoring methods. It's what to do if this is not your common factor. Let's say we have something like 6x squared plus x minus 2. Now in this case, 6 is not the GCF. I can't divide 1 by 6 and I can't divide negative 2 by 6. Well, I can, but it's going to yield fractions. So in this case, 6 is not the GCF, so we need another method. This is called the payback method. Okay, so for the payback method, what we're going to do, we're going to circle that leading coefficient and we're going to borrow it. The way you borrow it is to multiply it into the last number. So we have a new trinomial, which is not an equivalent trinomial. This is like mathematical magic. Just uh, This is not an equivalent expression. This is simply helping us perform the payback method. So now this is a factorable trinomial. The factors of negative 12 that are one apart that add to a positive 1 are positive 4 and negative 3. So those are my factors. x plus 4 and x minus 3. If you needed to list every factor of negative 12, that's fine. But you'd end up with positive 4 and negative 3 are the ones that add to positive 1. So now this isn't factored. This is called the payback method for a reason because we have to pay it back. We borrowed the 6. We have to give it back. So what you do is after you factor your fake trinomial, divide both of the numbers, not the variables, just the numbers, by whatever number we borrowed. We borrowed a 6, so I'm going to divide both of the terms by 6. So now you're going to end up with two fractions. If they divide cleanly, so be it. Good to go. For example, if this was 6 over 3 and it would yield a 2, good to go. So let's reduce both of these fractions. We can reduce 4 over 6. Divide them both by 2 to give you 2 over 3. And we can reduce this to 1 half. Once both fractions are reduced completely, if there are any remaining denominators, they simply go in front of the coefficient. So the 3 becomes a coefficient of x, so we end up with 3x plus 2. The 2 becomes a coefficient of x over here, so we end up with 2x minus 1. And this is factored completely. If I were to foil this back through, I would end up with 6x squared plus x minus 2. Most important thing about the payback method, it's called the payback method for a reason. You have to give it back. Reduce each fraction. Any remaining denominators become a coefficient. If it 
cleans up to become an integer, then that's it. And that's the payback method.